The Second Book of Maccabees, Chapter 1. To the brothers, the Jews, who are throughout Egypt, the brothers, the Jews, who are in Jerusalem and in the region of Judea, send greetings and good peace. May God be gracious to you, and may he remember his covenant, which was spoken to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, his faithful servants, and may he give to all of you the heart to worship him and to do his will, and with a great heart and a willing soul, may he throw open your heart with his law and with his precepts, and may he create peace. May he heed your prayers and be reconciled to you, and may he not forsake you in the evil time. And now, in this place, we are praying for you. When Demetrius reigned in the 169th year, we Jews wrote to you during the tribulation and assaults which overcame us in those years from the time that Jason withdrew from the Holy Land and from the kingdom. They burnt the gate and they shed innocent blood and we prayed to the Lord and were heard and we have brought forth sacrifices and fine wheat flour and we kindled the lamps and set forth the loaves and now celebrate the days of shelters in the month of Kislev in the 188th year from the people who are at Jerusalem and in Judea and from the Senate and Judas to Aristobulus, the magistrate of King Ptolemy, who is of the ancestry of anointed priests, and to those Jews who are in Egypt, greetings and good health. Having been freed by God from great peril, we give thanks to him greatly, inasmuch as we have been struggling against so great a king, for he caused those who fought against us and against the holy city to burst forth from Persia. For when the commander himself was in Persia, and with him an immense army, he fell in the temple of Nanea, having been deceived by the counsel of the priests of Nanea. For Antiochus also came to the place with his friends, as if to live with her, and so that he could receive much money in the name of a dowry. And when the priests of Nanea had made the proposal, and he had entered with a few men into the vestibule of the shrine, they closed the temple. After Antiochus had entered and throwing open a hidden entrance to the temple, they cast stones and they struck the leader and those who were with him. And having severed their limbs and cut off their heads, they threw them outside. Blessed be God through all things who has delivered up the impious, therefore establishing the purification of the temple on the 25th day of the month of Kislev, we considered it necessary to signify this to you so that you likewise may keep the day of shelters and the day of the fire that was given when Minamaya offered sacrifice after the temple and the altar had been built. For when our fathers were led into Persia, the priests, who at that time were worshippers of God, secretly took the fire from the altar and they kept it hidden in a valley where there was a deep and dry pit and they kept it in that in safe in that place in such a way that the place would be unknown to all. But when many years had passed and it pleased God that Nehemiah should be sent to the king of Persia, he sent some of the posterity of those priests who had hidden it to seek the fire. And just as they told us, they did not find the fire, but only deep water. Then he ordered them to draw it up and to carry it to him. And the priest, Nehemiah, ordered the sacrifices which had been set out to be sprinkled with the same water, both the wood and those things that were placed on it. And when this was done and the time came, when the sun shined brightly, which before was in a cloud, there was kindled a great fire, so much so that all were filled with 
wonder. But all the priests were reciting prayer while the sacrifice was being consumed, with Jonathan beginning and the rest answering. And the prayer of Nehemiah was held in this way. O oh Lord God, creator of all, terrible and strong, just and merciful, you alone are the good king. You alone are excellent. You alone are just and all-powerful and eternal, who frees Israel from all evil, who created the chosen fathers and sanctified them. Receive the sacrifice on behalf of all your people, Israel, and preserve and sanctify your portion. Gather together our dispersion, free those who are in servitude to the Gentiles, and respect those who are despised and abhorred, so that the Gentiles may know that you are our God. Afflict those who in their arrogance are oppressing us and treating us abusively. Establish your people in your holy place, just as Moses said. And so the priests sang hymns until the sacrifice had been consumed. And when the sacrifice had been consumed, Nehemiah ordered the remainder of the water to be poured upon the great stones. When this had been done, a flame kindled, was kindled from them, but it was consumed by the light that shined brightly from the altar. In truth, when this thing became known, it was reported to the king of Persia that in the place where the fire had been hidden by those priests who had been led away, water appeared, by which Nehemiah and those who were with him purified the sacrifices. But the king, considering and examining the matter diligently, made a temple for it, so that he might study what had happened. And when he had studied it, he gave the priests many goods and presents one another of one kind or another, and using his own hands, he distributed these. And then the Maya called this place Nephthar, which is interpreted as purification, but with many it is called Nephthi. Chapter 2. Now it is found in the descriptions of the prophet Jeremiah that he ordered those who transmigrated to take the fire just as it was signified and as he ordered into the transmigration. And he gave them the law so that they would never forget the commandments of the Lord and so that they would not go astray in their minds, seeing the idols of gold and silver and their ornaments. And in this manner, with other sayings, he exhorted them, lest they remove the law from their heart. Furthermore, it was in the same writing how the prophet, by divine response, ordered that the tabernacle and the ark be made to accompany him until he exited from the mountain where Moses ascended and saw the inheritance of God. And arriving there, Jeremiah found a place in a cave, and he brought both the tabernacle and the ark and the altar of incense into that place, and he obstructed the opening. And certain ones of those who followed him approached to make note of the location, but they were not able to find it. But when Jeremiah knew of it, he blamed them, saying, The place shall be unknown until God shall gather together the congregation of the people and until he may be favorably inclined. And then the Lord will reveal these things and the majesty of the Lord shall appear and there will be a cloud just as it was also manifested to Moses and just as he manifested these when Solomon petitioned that the place should be sanctified to the great God for he also drew upon wisdom magnificently and so having wisdom he offered the sacrifice of the dedication and the consummation to the temple. And just as Moses prayed to the Lord and fire descended from heaven and consumed the Holocaust, so also Solomon prayed and fire descended from heaven and consumed the Holocaust. And Moses 
just said that it was consumed because the sin offering was not eaten. And similarly, Solomon also celebrated the eight days of the dedication. Moreover, these same things were put into the descriptions and commentaries of Nehemiah, including how, when constructing a library, he gathered together from the regions the books of the prophets and of David and the epistles of the kings and from the holy gifts. And similarly, Judas also gathered together all the things that were destroyed by the war that befell us, and these are with us. Therefore, if you desire these things, send those who may carry them to you. And so, since we will be celebrating the purification, we wrote to you. Therefore, you will do well if you keep these days. But we hope that God, who has freed his people and has rendered to all the inheritance and the kingdom and the priesthood and sanctification, just as he promised in the law, will quickly have mercy on us and will gather us together from under heaven into the holy place. For he has rescued us from great perils and he has purged the place. The truth about Judas Maccabeus and his brothers and the purification of the great temple and the dedication of the altar and also about the battles which pertain to Antiochus the illustrious and his son Eupater and about the illuminations which came from heaven to those who acted on behalf of the Jews with fortitude was such that they, though few, vindicated the entire region and put flight to a multitude of the barbarous and recovered the most famous temple in the whole world and freed the city and restored the laws that were abolished for the Lord with all tranquility was acting favorably toward them. And similar things as have been comprised in five books of Jason, the Cyrenian, we have attempted to abridge into one volume for considering the multitude of the books and the difficulty that those who are willing to undertake the narrations of histories find due to the multitude of events we have taken care so that indeed those who are willing to read may have delights of the mind so that in truth the studious may easily more easily be able to commit to memory and also so that all readers may find it useful. And indeed, we ourselves, who have taken up the task of abridging this work, have no easy labor for, in truth, more correctly, we have assumed an activity full of vigilance and sweat, just as those who prepare a feast also seek to be attentive to the will of others for the sake of gratitude of many, we willingly undertake the labor, indeed, leaving to the authors the truths about particular details. We instead have been devoted to this form, striving to be brief, for just as the architect of a new house, who have concern for the entire structure, and in truth, he who takes care to paint it will seek out what is fitting to adorn it, so also should such things be considered by us. Moreover, to collect knowledge and to order words and to discuss every particular point attentively, so is the duty of the author of a history. Yet truly to pursue brevity of speech and to shun the extension of matters is conceded to an abbreviator. Therefore, here we will begin the narration. Let so much be sufficient to say in preface for it is foolish to go on and on before the account when the account itself is succinct. Chapter 3. Therefore, when the holy city was inhabited with all peace, and also the laws were still being kept very well because of the piety of Onias, the high priest, and the hatred that his soul held for evil, it happened that even the kings and princes themselves considered the place worthy of the highest honor, 
So they glorified the temple with very great gifts, so much so that Seleucus, king of Asia, furnished from his revenues all of the expenses for the ministry pertaining to the sacrifices. But Simon, from the tribe of Benjamin, having been appointed as overseer of the temple, obstructed the chief priest in order to undertake some kind of iniquity in the city. But when he was not able to overcome Onias, he went to Apollonius, the son of Tarsus, who at that time was governor of Colesyria and Phoenicia, and he announced to him that the treasury in Jerusalem was full of innumerable sums of money and that the common storehouse, which did not pertain to the allotment for the sacrifices, was immense and that it would be possible for all of us to fall under the king, the power of the king. And when he had presented the news that he brought back to King Apollonius about the money, he summoned Heliodorus, who was in charge of this matter, and he sent him with orders in order to transport the aforesaid money. And immediately Heliodorus set forth on the way indeed, appearing as if sojourning to the cities of Colossaria and Phoenicia. But in truth, the reason was to complete the proposition of the king. But when he had arrived at Jerusalem and had been kindly accepted into the city by the high priest, he explained to him the information that had been provided concerning the money, and he freely disclosed the cause for which he was present. But he questioned whether these things were truly so. Then the high priest revealed to him that these things had been deposited along with the provisions for the widows and the orphans. In truth, a certain part of that which imp impious Simon had reported belonged to Hyrcanus, son of Tobias, a very eminent man, but the entire amount was 400 talents of silver and 200 of gold, for in truth, to deceive those who had entrusted in the place and the temple that is honored throughout the whole world for its veneration and sanctity would be altogether impossible. But because of those things that he held as orders from the king, he said that by all means the money must be transferred to the king. And so on the appointed day, Heliodorus entered to set these things in order, yet Truly, there was no small amount of trepidation throughout the entire city. And so the priests threw themselves before the altar in their priestly vestments, and they called upon him from heaven, who had established the, oil, the law about deposits, such that those with whom they had deposited, it would keep it safe. Now, truly, whoever saw the countenance of the high priest was wounded in mind, for his face and the changing of its color declared the inner sorrow of the soul, for this one man was so immersed in grief and in physical dread that it was clear to those who beheld him that sorrow had affected his heart, but and now others flowed together in flocks from the houses pleading and making public supplication on behalf of the place which soon might be brought into contempt. And the women wrapped with hair cloth around their chest flowed together through the streets and even the virgins who were cloistered rushed forth to Ananias and others rushed to the walls and truly certain ones looked through the windows but every one of them stretching forth their hands toward heaven made supplication for the expectation of the mixed multitude and of the great priest in agony would have endowed anyone with pity and indeed these called upon almighty god so that the trust that had been entrusted to them would be preserved with all integrity but heliodorus completed the same thing that had been decreed being himself present in the place with his attendants near treasury. Then the spirit of Almighty God 
made a great manifestation of his presence, so much so that all who had presumed to yield to him were turned aside by fainting and dread, falling by the power of God. For there appeared to him, there appeared to them a certain horse, having a terrible rider adorned with the best covering, and he rushed forth and assailed Heliodorus with his front hooves, and he who sat upon him seemed to have armor of gold. Moreover, there appeared two other youths with the appearance of power, the glory of nobility, and the apparel of splendor. These stood near him on each side, and they scourged him without ceasing, striking with many scourges. Then Heliodorus suddenly fell to the ground, and they quickly took him up, draped by a great darkness, and having placed him onto a stretcher, they rushed him away. And so he had approached the aforesaid treasury with so many officials and attendants, was carried away with no one to bring help to him, the manifest power of God being made known, and indeed through divine power. He lay mute and also was deprived of all hope of recovery, but they blessed, blessed the Lord because he had magnified his place and because the temple, which a little while before was filled with confusion and fear, became filled with joy and gladness when the all-powerful Lord appeared. Then truly certain friends of Heliodorus came forth to petition Onias so that he would call upon the Most High to grant life to him who was appointed to breathe his last breath. But the high priest, considering that the king might perhaps suspect that some malice against Heliodorus had been completed by the Jews, offered a beneficial sacrifice for the health of the men. And when the priest that was praying, the same youths dressed in the same clothing were standing by Heliodorus, and they said, Give thanks to Ananias the priest. For it was on his behalf that the Lord has granted life to you. But having been scourged by God, you must announce to all the great things of God and his power. And having said this, they disappeared. Then Heliodorus offered sacrifice to God and made great vows to him who had permitted him to live. And he gave thanks to Ananias. And gathering his troops, he returned to the king but he testified to all about the works of the great God, which he had seen with his own eyes. And so, when the king questioned Heliodorus as to who might be fit to be sent once more to Jerusalem, he said, If you have any enemy or a traitor to your kingdom, send him there, and he will return to you scourged, if he even escapes. For truly in that place there is a certain power of God. Yes, he who has his dwelling in the heavens is the visitor and protector of that place. And he strikes and destroys those arriving to do evil. Thus, the things about Heliodorus and the preservation of the treasury happened in this way.